I discover that I can make forgiveness a tradition when I realize that the very thing that is so presenting turmoil, the, the incident, the actions of someone that is creating such a turmoil with me are the very same kind of actions that I commit. I'm able to discover forgiveness when I realize that, that I'm more alike than we are different. The ability to send away, to dismiss guilt, to release what I am owed, and to pour out resentment and hostility is only located within the caverns of personal discovery. I appreciate what Randy said in class today. There's only one person you and I really have any control over, and it's us. And if I am on the journey towards discovering forgiveness, that will only take place in the caverns of my personal discovery. I have to unearth them within me. Discovering forgiveness is similar to reframing a picture. You have this family heirloom. It's hung in a frame for years. But the frame has dilapidated and you all of a sudden have to reframe that picture. What kind of frame are you going to put this in? You're going to be careful about the new frame, aren't you? You're, you're going to, it's going to be worth all kinds of expense, isn't it? Reframing. That's the concept that we need to apply when it comes to discovering forgiveness. We take this incident that has happened around which the framework of bitterness and resentment and maybe anger and hurt and perhaps even hatred has developed and it has framed in this incident with all of those feelings, all of those emotions, all that turmoil. And what we say is, I cannot change that event. But what I can do is frame it in something different. That's what we need to discover. The picture may remain the same, but it receives a new frame. Reframing is not and should not be considered to be the full, complete process of forgiveness. In other words, if I reframe it, doesn't mean that I've necessarily forgiven. But what we are saying is the reframing begins the process of discovering forgiveness. And I do not think that it's possible to experience forgiveness without reframing. In other words, it is the beginning, but it is the necessary beginning of forgiveness. It is not the completion, but it is the initiation of the process of forgiveness. We're going to talk about three different materials that need to go into that new frame. Number one is a heart that is willing to understand. A heart that is willing to understand. Now, I want to begin with a couple of warnings. You know, we've already talked about that in this whole process, and, and when, when we are troubled by events with, and that cause us to struggle with forgiveness, the controlling part of us often desires to understand things that we're not going to be able to understand. And we substitute and perhaps seek to alleviate the responsibility to, to forgive because we don't understand. Don't confuse an understanding heart with the fleshly desire that wants to unravel the mysterious tangle of emotions and motivations within somebody else. In other words, I'm not saying before I can forgive you, I have to understand how you work. You don't make sense to me. I don't get it. And until I get it, I can't forgive. That's not the kind of understanding that we're talking about. Such a fleshly sham is usually nothing but an exercise in hypocritical superiority. Let's get honest. When we get stuck in an unforgiving spirit and say, I don't understand, I don't get it, what we're really saying is, I don't understand and I don't get it. There's an element of placing ourselves above others. And in the process of discovering forgiveness, what have we decided? We're more alike. That's what we discover, is we're more alike than we are different. So this understanding is not, has to do, it doesn't have to do with assembling data and accumulating information so that we can comprehend all the sordid details behind the event which has produced all 
the painful situation. In other words, yeah, I want to forgive, but until I understand it all, I cannot forgive. That's not the reframing material of which we are speaking. The understanding heart that I'm referencing is the understanding that releases itself from the need to comprehend the complexity of human conduct. Here it is simply. The event, the people, the person that is causing you to struggle with a lack of forgiveness. You bring yourself and reframe it all with this. I just don't need to know. Anybody getting that yeah but now? This is when it shows up. Folks, when it comes to forgiveness, we don't need to know. We do not need to know. This understanding knows that even the most complete, uh, complete answers to the whys are irrelevant in light of forgiveness. Why doesn't make a lick of difference. And the reason is because there's guilt. I don't have to know a why. The process of forgiveness is assuming that somebody's guilty of something. You know, I've mentioned this before, but so many times, parents, we get stuck in the, in the whys. You know, the kid has, has misbehaved. They've broken the curfew. They come in and say, why? Why? And, and kids just get good at giving answers. And the behavior goes un unaddressed, as long as we get the answer. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. You and I believe that if we just understand things, and folks, it's not just in the area of forgiveness. It's, a, it's, it, it's, it's our struggle as human beings. We want to know. We want the information. There are some things for which we have no information. This understanding comprehends that there is always more to a person than the terrible, horrific, uncaring wrong that they have committed. Do you believe that? The kind of understanding heart that I'm saying we have to reframe events of our, in our life with is an understanding that says people are more than what they do. You want others to see you that way, don't you? It also recognizes a peaceful, that peaceful coexistence amid diversity and disagreement is achievable. Peace is possible. He who is slow to anger has great understanding, Solomon writes, but he who is quick-tempered exalts folly. A tranquil heart is life to the body, but passion is rottenness to the bones. <laughs> Tranquil heart. Interesting concept. Look at how all these different translations render this. NIV says peace, the heart that is at peace. Uh, the New King James, a sound heart. A relaxed attitude is what the Living Bible paraphrase says. And Young's literal says a healed heart. The, Greek, uh, the Hebrew word here actually means to be cured. It, it, it's like what a medicine would accomplish. And it comes from a root word that means to mend together, like to stitch something back together, to sew something back together. And so an understanding heart brings soundness, peacefulness, relaxed healing, a curing medicine, a stitching of things back together. An understanding heart makes that the mental perception with which the event now is going to be perceived. Forgiveness says, I possess the ability to take an extremely painful situation and to say, I can still be relaxed. I can be at peace. This reframing material, Solomon says, restores life to the body. The other, he says, is rottenness to the bones. 
A heart that is willing to understand, that's the first material. The second material that we need to reframe with is seeing value in the offender. We need to see value in the offender. <clears throat> At its core, unforgiveness is a means of denigrating another person for their improper behavior. That's what unforgiveness is. The core issue of unforgiveness is you've misbehaved and you are going to pay the penalty for your misbehavior. What you did was not right. You are terrible. That is at the core what a lack of forgiveness is all about. 